Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Dan Friedel. And I'm Katie Weaver. This program is aimed at English learners. So we speak slowly and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Today on the show, John Russell has a story about China's dropping population. Dan Friedel brings us a story from the world of art. And Faith Perlow presents this week's Ask a Teacher. She talks about the differences and similarities between the words college and university. We close the show with an American story. Today, Mario Ritter Jr. brings us Chicken Little. But first... China announced recently that the country's mainland population fell by 2 million people in 2023. This drop is the second yearly decrease in population adding to concerns about the country's future economic growth. The National Bureau of Statistics said the total number of people in China dropped by 2.08 million, or 0.15 percent, to 1.409 billion in 2023. The numbers are estimates based on studies and do not include Hong Kong and Macau. China does a full population count, or census, every ten years. The number of deaths rose by 690,000 to 11.1 million, more than twice the increase recorded in 2022. Population experts said the aging of the population and COVID-19 outbreaks account for most of the rise. But the data also suggested important information about the number of births, which fell by 540,000, or 5.6 percent. The drop was smaller than the decreases of the past three years. Still, the decreasing birth rate suggests that the fertility rate is a long-term economic and societal problem for China. The lower fertility rate, together with people living longer because of better health care, means China is slowly growing older. Demographer Zhou Shujin, formerly of the Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences, estimated that the proportion of the population that is 65 or older could double to more than 30% by 2050. These population changes could slow economic growth over time. High child care and education costs are pressing issues in family planning among married Chinese. Women are having fewer babies despite government incentives and the easing of its one-child policy in recent years. Other economic issues reduced interest in baby-making. Youth unemployment hit record highs, wages for many white-collar workers fell, and a crisis in the property sector, where more than two-thirds of household wealth is stored, grew worse. The data adds to concerns that the world's number two economy faces reduced growth due to fewer workers and buyers, as well as rising costs of care for old people and retirement payments. The state-run Chinese Academy of Sciences sees the retirement system running out of money by 2035. Zhu Guoping, a 57-year-old farmer in northwestern Gansu province, said his yearly income of about $2,779 leaves his family with little savings. 
He will receive a $22 monthly pension once he turns 60. The money is definitely not enough, Chu said. Maybe our children can provide us with some support in the future. Births in China have been dropping for many years as a result of the one-child policy that was in place from 1980 to 2015. In addition, the country saw fast urbanization during that time. Large populations moved from China's rural farms into cities where the costs of growing a family were higher. Other countries in the region also face long-term population problems. Japan's birth rate was 6.3 per 1,000 people in 2022, while South Korea's rate was 4.9. As we have observed again and again from other low-fertility countries, fertility decline is often very difficult to reverse, University of Michigan demographer Zhou Yun said. I'm John Russell. A collection of modern statues has been placed around Venezuela's capital, Caracas, in an attempt to increase local interest in art. A total of 19 fiberglass pieces created by Venezuelan artist Antonio Azato are sitting in public spaces around the city. The statues are modeled after the famous 17th century painting Las Meninas by Spanish artist Diego Velázquez. That piece shows a young princess, Margaret Teresa, being assisted by two helpers. The painting is displayed in Madrid's Prado Museum. The larger-than-life statues or figures appear in Caracas in modern, colorful designs. They show the same rounded dress shape as the princess in the Velázquez painting. The tops have a head but no face. The figures are made to look like different people or things. One is painted to look like Gleber Torres, a baseball player with the New York Yankees who comes from Venezuela. Another represents singer Oscar de Leon, while others are painted to look like colorful birds or flowers. Azato told Reuters news agency his street statues are designed to give the public a break from technology and the modern world. He hopes the street placements will persuade people to briefly stop and think about art. Lots of people don't know Velázquez and don't know Las Meninas, Azato said. He added, he hopes the figures will lead people, particularly younger ones, to be curious about the pieces and to look closer at the statues and their meaning. Azato has put statues in other cities in the past. In all, he says he has created almost 300 Among them were figures made to represent tennis player Rafael Nadal and other famous individuals. I'm Dan Friedel. This week on Ask a Teacher, we answer a question from Lee about the difference between the words university and college. Hello, teacher. I love this program. 
Would you mind explaining the difference between university and college? I often misunderstand these two nouns. Thanks, Lee. We are glad you love our programs, Lee, and thank you for writing to us. This is an important question, especially for international students who might want to apply to U.S. colleges and universities. Both places provide higher education, but their degree offerings, number of students, and costs differ. Let's start with university. Universities are large schools offering higher education. That includes undergraduate and graduate degree programs. Most faculty at universities are not only teachers but also researchers. Large universities have tens of thousands of students, and have students from all over the U.S. and the world. Since universities offer both undergraduate and graduate degrees, they may offer many classes in many fields. But the cost of attending a university can be high, especially at private universities in the U.S., which are not supported by state governments. An example of a public university is West Virginia University. An example of a private university is Yale University in the state of Connecticut. Let's move on to college. College can also mean a school where students receive higher education. Many high school students are asked, "Where do you want to go to college?" The answer to this question could be a university, a community college, or even a trade school. We also refer to students in higher education as college students. When Liz was a college student, she took classes during the day, and worked in a hotel at night. College is often used as a general word. For a school offering education after high school, but college can have more specific meanings too. Colleges are smaller schools that focus on undergraduate programs. They include community colleges, private and liberal arts colleges, and even technical colleges and trade schools. Faculty at community colleges mainly teach and advise students. Rather than do research, a college can also be a division within a university. For example, a university might have a college of arts and sciences, which gives bachelor's degrees. Colleges are smaller and have fewer students, hundreds to thousands of students, rather than tens of thousands of students, because colleges, especially community colleges, Serve a smaller population; they have fewer international students. Classes are also likely to be limited at colleges, especially at some community colleges. They might offer general education classes, career or technical degrees. Community colleges might offer some four-year undergraduate degrees, but many offer two-year programs. The aim might be for students to transfer to a four-year school. Career or technical certificates permit students to immediately enter the workforce upon completing their classes. She went to a community college to study cooking, to get a job working in a restaurant. The cost of attending a community college is lower. The schools offer a low-cost way to gain college credits. However, private colleges and some technical schools may be just as costly as private universities. Please let us know if these explanations and examples have helped you, Lee. Do you have a question about American English? Send us an email at learningenglish. At voanews. dot com, and that's Ask a Teacher. I'm Faith Perlo.
that was this week's Ask a Teacher. Welcome back to the show, Faith. It's great to be back with you, Katie. This week, a listener wrote to us asking about the difference between college and university. You noted the main differences, cost, population, and number of students and degree programs. You also used the term liberal arts colleges. Can you go into more detail about what those are? Sure, Katie. This is a great question and something that we did not go into detail about. Liberal arts colleges generally are smaller schools that offer a wide range of subjects in the humanities, sciences, and fine arts, meaning painting and sculpture, etc. If a student goes to college and is unsure of what they want to study or major in, sometimes a liberal arts college can be helpful. A student can take classes in a lot of different subjects. Right. And can you explain humanities? Humanities has the word human in it. So when we talk about the humanities, it is the study of things that makes humans unique and different. Areas like language, philosophy, history, culture, law and politics, religion, performing arts like theater or dance, music and visual arts are all considered the humanities. So it is a very large area of studies, and that can be helpful for students who are unsure of what they want to study when they get to college. You are an English teacher, Faith. Did you study in the humanities when you went to college? I did, Katie, and I was one of these students who wasn't sure what they wanted to study. I had general interests in language and history, and I was also curious about the world. So for a few semesters, I centered my study on subjects in the humanities, taking languages like French and Russian, studying different cultures and political systems, and even taking some unique science classes like physical anthropology. All of these classes were in the College of Arts and Sciences at my university. And that brings us back to one of the differences between college and university. Sometimes colleges are smaller schools or departments within a university. Thanks for coming in, Faith, and sharing so much about this subject. Thanks for having me, Katie. And now, an American children's story from VOA Learning English. Today's story probably had its start long before it was published in Europe long ago. It might have first been known as Henny Penny, but the story has been told to American children at least since the mid-1800s under a title similar to Chicken Little. Generations have heard and thought about the lessons of the little chicken who causes big problems for a group of well-meaning but not so thoughtful birds. Today's version is based on two examples of the story. One is called Remarkable Story of Chicken Little. John Green Chandler had it published in the city of Boston, Massachusetts in 1842. Catherine Pyle published her 1918 version in Mother's Nursery Tales. The story has taken on its own American qualities and is a little like a parable a story that teaches a moral lesson. Later retellings, including a few movie versions, have made changes to some of the characters 
or aimed to teach different ideas. Here is the story, Chicken Little, in VOA Learning English. One day, Chicken Little fell asleep under some flowers. Cow wandered by, reached over the fence, and bit off some flowers. The noise wakened Chicken Little just as a flower petal fell on her tail. Squawk, squawk, cried Chicken Little, frightened by the petal's landing. The sky is falling, she continued, her call rising louder with her terror. Squawk, squawk! And she jumped up and began to run moving as fast as her two legs could carry her. She did not stop running until she came to the barnyard. There she found Henny Penny, scratching in the dirt of the barnyard. Oh, Henny Penny, do not scratch, run, cried Chicken Little. The sky is falling. The scratching stopped. Then Hen called out, How do you know that, Chicken Little? I saw it with my eyes, I heard it with my ears, and part of it fell on my tail. Let us run until we get some place. Squawk, squawk, cried Hen in return, a look of shock on her face. Then run she did, speeding away from the barnyard. Chicken Little followed close behind. They almost ran right past the little lake just as Ducky Lucky was going in for a swim. Oh, Ducky Lucky, Ducky Lucky, do not try to swim, cried Henny Penny. The sky is falling. Seriously, Henny Penny, why do you think that? asked Ducky Lucky. Chicken Little told me. How do you know the sky is falling, Chicken Little? I saw it with my eyes, I heard it with my ears, and part of it fell on my tail. Oh, let us run until we get some place. Ducky Lucky was persuaded. Yes, we had better run, he yelled, and the three took off, Ducky Lucky waddling faster than he ever had before. The birds ran and ran until they came to a green meadow, and there was Goosey Lucy eating the green grass. Oh, Goosey Lucy, Goosey Lucy, do not eat, run, cried Ducky Lucky. Why should I run? asked Goosey Lucy. Because the sky is falling. How do you know that, Ducky Lucky? Henny Penny told me. How do you know that, Henny Penny? Chicken Little told me. How do you know that, Chicken Little? Because I saw it with my eyes, and heard it with my ears, and part of it fell on my tail. Oh, let us run some place. Yes, we had better run, cried Goosey Lucy. Away they all ran, Goosey Lucy in the lead, and they ran and ran, until they came to the turkey yard. And there was Turkey Lurkey strutting and gobbling. Oh, Turkey Lurkey, do not strut, cried Goosey Lucy. Why should I not strut? asked Turkey Lurkey. Because the sky is falling. How do you know it is? Ducky Lucky told me. How do you know, Ducky Lucky? Henny Penny told me. How do you know, Henny Penny? 
Chicken Little told me. Chicken Little, how do you know this for a fact? I could not help knowing. I saw it with my eyes. I heard it with my ears. And a part of it fell on my tail. Oh, let us run until we get some place. Yes, it would be best to run, said Turkey Lurkey. So away they all ran, first Turkey Lurkey, and then Goosey Lucy, and then Ducky Lucky, and then Henny Penny, and then Chicken Little. They ran and ran until they came to Foxy Loxy's house. Foxy Loxy was resting, spread out across the doorway. She kept yawning, opening her mouth wide so that all her sharp teeth showed. But her mouth snapped shut at the sudden arrival of the frightened birds. Turkey Lurkey and Goosey Lucy and Ducky Lucky and Henny Penny and Chicken Little. Her eyes softened and her ears stood up. She was so very happy to see them all, and smiled sweetly. Well, well, the fox said. What brings you all here? Foxy Loxy, prevent yourself from yawning, cried the old turkey lurkey. Indeed, the sky is falling. How do you know that, turkey lurkey? asked the fox. Goosey Lucy informed me. How do you know that, Goosey Lucy? Ducky Lucky told me. How do you know that, Ducky Lucky? Henny Penny told me. How do you know that, Henny Penny? Chicken Little. How do you know that, Chicken Little? I could not help knowing, for I saw it with my eyes and I heard it with my ears, and part of it fell on my tail. Oh, where shall we run? We ought to go some place. Well, said the fox, you come right into my house, and I will protect you and take such good care of you that even if the sky falls, you will not know anything about it. So, in ran Turkey Lurkey, and Goosey Lucy, and Ducky Lucky, and Henny Penny, and Chicken Little. Foxy Loxy waited for a while, and then shut the door firmly behind her. She would not let the falling sky threaten her guests, you see. She was going to take special care of them all. And maybe she did. But no one ever saw Chicken Little or her friends again. That's all the time we have today. But we'll be back tomorrow with another Learning English program on the Voice of America. Thanks to Faith Perlow, Mario Ritter Jr., and John Russell. And, of course, thanks to you for listening. I'm Katie Weaver. And I'm Dan Friedel. 